hello guys welcome back to the second part or the part two of our rs java operators as a recap the last time we talked about operators that helps us in creating observable observable from the scratch so we had a talk on how to use create operator defer range just interval timer repeat from okay so we talk about these operators in our last tutorials so today we are going to have tutorials on how to use transform uh, transformation i mean operators that helps us in transforming observables okay so that's what we are coming to concentrate on so today we are going to talk about how to use buffer buffer operator how to use flat map operator and also how to use concat map operator we will also try to talk about using sorry using group by operator using window operator and we also we will want to talk about how to use scan operator okay so let's try to see some of the wordings or some of the explanation on these operators so let's go back to our rs operator document documentation so these are the operators that we are going to talk about so what does buffer means okay so when you go into the buffer okay so you 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 see that basically buffer tries to gather items emitted by the observables into a bundle and emit this bundle rather than emitting the items one by one okay so we have something like these are for example the red the yellow the green these items are the ones that have been emitted so under not under normal circumstance the red has to come i mean the item red will emit on its own followed by yellow followed by green but this time around with the buffer it will try it so as it is showing here the three items comes one it is being emitted once so it buffers or it groups these items into three then emits them same to the next one so that's what buffer actually means so let's let's go to back into the code and let's demonstrate how to use the buffer so we create our method that does the buffering okay so buffer operator buffer operator so let's do something so we try to use sorry this let's call buffer operator dot range so let's use range as a creator so it's going to create the observable so we are going to start from one with a count of let's say uh 20 okay so after so under normal circumstances this is what's going to happen let me let me try to run this and let's see what is going to happen so from so the range is going to give us the elements or items from one up to 20 counts okay so let's so let's try to subscribe so broken Broken subscribe. Okay. Okay. So let's let's quickly run this and see what is happening. Okay. So we are not buffering them yet. So let's try to. Okay. So as you can see, it is counting from one up to twenty okay so with the buffer as we are saying now whenever we get to one it emits the one then when it gets to element two 
it emits the element two, three. But this time around, let's try to buffer them into three groups. So, uh, we are going to introduce the buffer operator, buffer operator with the count. So let's buffer them into three counts. I mean three items. So this time around, instead of counting from one to twenty, it's not going to do that. It is going to group the emitted items into three okay it's going to group the emitted items into three when it has got into three let's say a list so we're going to group the item into a list into three uh, a list of size three then after it has gotten to that peak then it will open the window then emit that list to us so let's run this and see how it works Okay, right. So this is how it's going to look. So now it emits one, it keeps it keeps it in the bundle, emits two, it keeps it in the bundle, the three, it keeps it. So now the count is three, then it will emit it as an item. So that's how the buffer or the buffering does. Okay. So guys, so now we know the buffering. So I think in rig uh in in I mean, in real scenarios, okay, in programming, what we, we can do is, let's say, uh, for example, we are doing a search. So buffering is one, is one of the operators that is very helpful when we are doing searching. So you know, sometimes when we are doing, ed uh, we are using the edit test, you'll be typing, pa, 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 pa. So as you are typing and you are trying to filter, filter, the list that maybe you are you are trying to i mean you are, you are trying to search on so as the user is typing all the time and so it's going to be expensive calls okay to either the database or the network call because the user is always typing and you are always listening to just a character count which is very expensive okay so we can use you can harness uh i mean the, we can you can we can we can try to use buffer so that it doesn't always it doesn't always hit the api or trying to query the database with a single character so we can try to hit the api every four seconds or every five seconds or you can try to fetch the data from the database every three seconds or every five seconds per how the user is inputting so maybe if the user try to type something like for example type i am um, going to school okay so if these characters were typed within five seconds interval now after the five seconds then the api or we are uh query or your function will just take this character and go into the database or the api to search for any item that's matching these items instead of sorry instead of one when the person the user types i it goes into the api or the database to check uh so if it is like then a um going like all this and to be going to the database which is very expensive so buffer helps us to achieve that okay so let's go on to our next operator which is flat map there's a lot of a lot of confusion when it comes to flat map due to how useful uh it, it can be to you with flat map you can do a, a lot of stuff with the flat map so and it is quite confusing but not that confusing <laughs> okay so let's try to understand the flat map so when it comes to flat map i think we can go back and see what flat map actually is so basically the flat map transform the items emitted by the by an observable into observables then flattens the emission from those into a, a single into a single observable so it takes for example it takes let's say the red ball is the item when it is being emitted it doesn't come to you it come into like the middle layer then a function will be applied to the red ball maybe the a function then that function will turn the red ball into a different observables again 
that can also emit a different items okay so it's very a bit complex but not complex just that it is very useful if you are to understand the the the, the essence of the flat map okay so let's try to use the code to understand this so we are coming to let's um, okay so let's also use the range we are coming to use the same range to test this case out so the range let's also start from 1 to 10 so 1 with the 10 count and after that we try to flat map it so it takes in a function okay so with a function then we return an observable source so what we are we are going to do is what will happen is with the range it will emit one for example it will start with one emit the one then as i said the flat map uh takes the observable the emitted item then convert it into a different observable okay so that's the, one of the difference between one major difference between a flat map and a map a map doesn't do that okay i think the map is part of the operators that we'll be talking about so for now let's leave the map we'll come there then we try to know the difference between the map and the flat map so with this what happens is when it emits the one we try to create a new observable uh, we try to create a new observable from this observable so we, we are going to return a new observable uh so maybe just we are going to use just or probably let's use map so let's see just the integer is just the integer then you map that you map it to so probably let's make it let's see another integer okay so we are going to return um, we are going to return let's say uh, um, a multiple of three so the integer times three so that's that's our function so this function is basically try to change or change the shape change the value from one so a, a, a function that's been applied to this emitted item is that integer multiplied by three and that's going to be the function okay so after that we return this of uh, this observables and later on we can try to read what is giving us so let's try to see how this will work so the out dot print line okay so basically before running this let's try to go through and see what is going to happen so with the flat map as i said it behaves exactly it behaves in a similar way as map but not exactly in a sense that for map if you use map you go there i think it's part of the operators we will touch on it but if you use map the map will try to convert it try to apply a function to the emitted item before releasing it to the uh the observer okay but with a flat map the only difference is uh we apply a function okay we apply a function to the emitted item but the function will convert that emitted item into a different observable and that observable can also be operated in a different line okay in a different timeline so it that new observable that will be created will also be emitting a different thing so that's that makes the use of flat map very a bit confusing and complicated because it can do a lot of things so we can have a chain of observables a lot of chains okay so that's so let's see how this is going to work and let me tell you this with the flat map you see if you can check the 
the item is going to start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the sequence is supposed to come. Okay, but with the flat map, what will happen is because we are actually converting, it's not just a map. Okay, so because we are converting the item into a different observable, this is the observable. Sometimes they interleave each other. So what I, I'm trying to say is instead of coming one, two, three, four in a sequential order, it's going to come in an an unordered ordered or orderly manner. Okay. So it will even take one and probably go, go and take let's say ten. So in that manner it's not going to be sequen sequential. And there are some operator that is very helpful if you don't want this on ordered manner and you want it to be still ordered then we can i think we can use concat uh, concat map so we also talk about that so let's qu quickly run this and see what we get out of this okay so let me run this okay what's happening so this time around i think with the with the flat map let me see okay so we are lucky we are still getting one two uh so now the one multiplying by three is three two multiplying by two is two, uh, six so you see the function is being applied to it now we have gotten the function being applied to it, but we are lucky this time around it's coming in an orderly manner. And it's not all the keys that is going to come in an on orderly manner. For example, if let's say let's try to do this in a different let's try to do this in a different uh, uh a different thread. Let's subscribe on a different thread and let's see if you achieve this on orderly manner. Okay, I think yes, as I said. So because this thing was being uh the observable was being operated on a the same thread, okay, and on the same thread, but this time around we are changing the observable applying this function on a different thread. That's the shadowless.io is a different thread, okay. And look at the function that we look at the output now three, six, then it goes to twenty seven. It is unorderly. 21 30 15 which is on orderly okay so that's how the flat map the flat map works so if if you are having a scenario where you want you still want your emission to come in an orderly manner please i think the flat map is not the convenient operator you fall on you can we can fall on this concat concat map which will order them for you so i think we'll showcase that that in a few minutes okay so that is that for flat map so as i said so quickly let's try to use the same operation or this the same preamble for mapping so as we have i think we know like we have we have even had an idea of the mapping with the flat map so let's try to change this concept into using a map so how do we use map map operator okay Ma using map operator so with the map operator the same thing so let's try to do copy we are going to use the same preamble a copy then we try to map it so you're not going to waste time so basically this is the same thing so we are you are just trying to apply a function so that's that's mapping the map works as the flat map the only difference is that it doesn't re it doesn't return you the items as an observable no it doesn't do that it just return you the actual item that you wanted okay so that's the that's one of the difference between the map and the flat map so let's do this i think when we run this we are going to get similar 
we are going to get a, a similar resource as we got for the flat map. Sorry. Uh, okay. So let's subscribe. So we haven't, we are, we are not giving it to the, okay. So let's try to run it and see what we are going to get. Okay. What are we getting? Uh, three, six. So basically, guys, so you see, so it's actually giving out the items in an orderly manner. Okay, sequentially. So that's one of the difference between the map and the flat map. The flat map doesn't care about the order. Okay, it doesn't really care about the order. It can come in a different form because it is processed in, on a, a parallel note. Okay, parallelly. So in that in that case, because we are we are maybe one will happen and due to maybe the complexity of the function being applied to it. A different from and maybe the the one which is supposed to be before it will come before that so that's so they they actually interleave each other and that's the reason why they come in an orderly like on orderly manner okay on orderly manner yes but with the mapping too and as i said one of the difference it just gives you the actual item it doesn't convert the observable into an observable but it gives you a convert it just change the form apply a function to it and that's it that's all okay that's all so let's with this said let's also try to know how they are a bit interrelated so let's know how to use the concat map as i said the concat map behave the same way as the flat map it behaves exactly as the, uh, the flat map the only difference is that with the concat map what it does is the flat map will try to concat map the flat map will try to as i said it will, it will try to uh apply the function to the items in a parallel manner okay so one which is faster will come so it doesn't depend on the the order the sequence but with the concat map it will maintain the sequence for you it will do everything the flat map is doing for is doing but then and still maintain the sequence for you so that's the only difference you see i didn't do anything so let's try to see this uh let's try to see this so i'm going to run these examples for you and we try to check the difference so this is the flat map and this is a concat map let me try to separate it so that you see the results the difference between the results print line Okay. Uh, so this is flat map. Operator. Operator, and we are going to have after that. We have concat map operator. Okay. So. Let's run this and see what, what we are going to get and the difference between the results. Are we getting something? Okay, so guys, let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think, let me check something. Okay, so with the with the concat map, sorry, sorry guys, sorry. Actually, they are, they are they are all using the flat map, so that's the reason why our, our emission the concat map is not full following in an orderly manner. Okay, you see, it is behaving as a, as if it is a flat map. It's because we haven't changed. So let's try to. So with the concat map, we just change it the same function all that we have to change is change from the flat map to concat map let's run this and see what we are going to get 
Okay, guys, so you can see the example yourself. Now, the flat map is behaving the same way as the concat map, but the difference is that the flat map initially is supposed to start with 3. But see, it is starting with 27, 6, 12. So the order is not maintained. But what do we see from the concat map? The order is maintained. It starts from 3, 6, 9, exactly up to the, the, the to 30. The order is still maintained, but the same operation. And one of the differences is that the concat map is very expensive. It's more expensive than the flat map simply because uh, while, while it is trying to apply the function, it is still trying to, it is trying very hard to still maintain the order. So, and in, in, in the case of maintaining the order in the process, it is making it very expensive. So that's one of the difference between the flat map and the concat map. Okay, so let's quickly talk about a uh, group by. So what does the group by means? The group by is more of more or less like groupings. You are going to group this based on a condition. So let's create this uh, void group by operator. The group by operator. What you are going to have is the observable dot. Let's say uh, let's try to use array. Oh, let's try to use. Is it arrays? Okay, let's try to group our items based on even numbers and on even numbers. So I think we can still use the range. Okay, we can still use the range function. Then, <coughs> sorry use the range function then we group them by a condition so new integer okay integer okay so uh let's let's group them Okay, so let's see. So you're going to give give them give them so or uh, integer modulo. So modulo two is equal to zero. Mm. Okay, so let's try this. So integer modulo two is equal to zero. Okay, let's quickly try this and see how unique it is. Okay. Oh, guys, sorry. It is grouping them, but then I think, uh, yeah, so we have to. Okay, so
so let's try to see if you can use the map to okay Let's find this and see. Oh. So. So I think the group has been done, but more or less like what you have to do is to get a thing. So <clears throat> sorry. So Let's try this. No, I think with the blocking, the blocking is not good. You can use the blocking. You can use the blocking. Okay, guys, so uh let's run this. Okay, so I realize I think fine it is doing the groupings. Okay, so it is sorting the the elements into either it is even numbers or odd numbers. But what is happening is I think with the map, as I said, the map. What will the map? The map will do that. The map will. The map operator will transform the observables into a non-observable objects. Okay, so with that instance. We are getting this are uh, what the group by is giving us is giving us a uh, an observable items. So in a sense, we are just converting the observable items into uh, let's say a string. Okay, that's the reason why it is not giving us the items within the objects, but it is printing the objects in it raw state for us. So what we can do is instead of using a map, let's use an operator that will give us an observable as a resource so probably we can think of using flat map as we rightly discuss so flat map you can have flat map single uh flat map itself so let's change all this Okay, so we return the key. Okay, so we are now going so you have to create an observable. Okay. So let's the boolean operator dot to list. 
Oh, what's it giving us? The to list is giving us a single. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where is the new people? Let's see. Okay, so guys, that is what we have gotten right now. You see, it has sorted the items. too much so this is what so actually it is printing from 1 to 10 okay 1 to 10 but then these are our odd numbers and the next one is the even numbers so 1 3 5 7 9 is the odd numbers and the there's the, the second element is the even numbers so that's just that so that's the how that's how the group by operator works actually so I have increased it to 20 count and this is our odd numbers from 1 to 20 and this from our even numbers from uh, 1 to 20. Okay, so that's it. So the group by, as I said, it tries to group the elements, group them according to a condition that we have, I mean the function. The function will determine the condition, okay? The function will determine the condition. So I think time is fast spent. So let's try to talk about how to use uh how to use you talk about buffer flat map map concat map group by so let's try to talk about windows and scan so quick one so with the let's have let's talk about the the scan operator so here we are going to be quick here the scan operator works like the uh it works like the map okay that's also the difference between the scan and the map the only difference is is that while the map is mapping one item to the another item it is one to one okay it always gives you the current item but with the scan it will give you the, the current item war but it will still give you the previous item that's the only difference the map will give you the current item but with the scan it will give you the current item and still give you the previous item so let's code it up. Observable dot let's say uh range. Let's use the range. Still use the range one to it's handy when you are using the range one to ten. And let's try to count. Let's try to have a summation of the. We are going to sum or yes, we are going to sum from one to ten, and let's see how using the scan uh, the, the scan operator how we are going to achieve this. So using the scan operator, uh, scan. Mm, so, <clears throat> okay. So new it takes a by function, by function operator. War. Okay. So the by function operator. Then. This is so. This is the actually. This is the previous item. Okay, let's name it previous, and this is the current i current item. Okay, so <clears throat> since we are trying to sum from one to ten, the previous contain the the previous sum. Then we add the current to it. So we're going to previous prep plus current okay then we call we subscribe it to it to get the item so let's quickly see the output of the scan operator the scan operator let's run this and see okay so what are we going to get so quickly guys first of all with the scan operator let's we started from one okay so actually since we are assigning one plus zero is still one then we go to two so it will give us the one and add two to the one so two plus one will give us three then we go to three three plus three will give us six then we go to the next item which is four four plus the previous sum which is six which is ten 
then we go to 5 5 plus 10 which is 15 so guys so at the end of the day the last item the last item is a sum of items from 1 to uh 1 to the third count i think if you get what i'm saying so we are going to sum so basically it is doing this sum 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so if you sum all these things these numbers up we are going to get 55 okay so but uh, i think we can still use an operator called reduce there's a, a another similarity similarity between the scan operator and the reduce so but with the with the reduce the reduce the difference between the scan and reduce here the reduce would will do the sum for you but then it's not going to give you print out all these items for you okay so just doing one and just do it once and gives you the the, the uh, i mean the final answer which is 55 okay and that's one of the difference between the scan and the reduce and i also give you the difference between the scan and the map the map will just give you the current item and just current item but it won't give you the previous for your for you to use your function or to for you to apply your function on them okay so lastly let's talk about the the window operator so the window operator behaves like we have a lot of similarities okay the window the window operator behaves like the buffer operator okay so window operator okay so as i said the window operator behaves like the buffer operator what is the difference the difference between the window operator and the buffer operator is that with the window operator this uh as the buffer will try to keep all the emitted items into a bundle per the condition within the buffer if it is if the buffer is to take three counts it will emit it will keep three items in, into a bundle emit the whole bundle to you okay but with the with the with the window operator what we'll do is it will let's say we have window let's say to keep three items in a bundle a still use a bundle concept it will keep the three items in the bundle then it will uh, emit that items to you but in this case it will omit emit the items as an ob uh, observable in the form of observable okay not just a normal thing so the only difference is the the observable between the observable between the the observable given by the op uh, the window operator but the buffer wouldn't give you the observable so let's code this up observable dot let's try to use the range i think yeah the range is better for examples sake mm. Let's say 20. Then we use window. Window still take the count. Let's still take the count three. Count. So we take three counts. Then since it go, it's going to give us observable. So let's see. Oh uh, yes, exactly. This is giving us observable. So if you try to print this thing out or we, are, we, are, we try to subscribe to this in a form of a strength we are going to get observable we are going to get observable so let me try to do this so let me bring the observable here i mean the window operator here below the buffer so that we can compare them so this is the window operator so let's print System dot out dot print line window operator to compare the difference. And this is this is going to be the uh, buffer operator. 
let's run this this app and let's see what we are going to get as the results okay 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 so we can see this here see the the difference there's no difference here with the buffer operator uh the range is giving us 1 to 20 with the window 1 to 20 same we are buffering 3 but we, with the window we are also buffering uh 3 okay and we are printing them out but see see that with the window operator we are getting observables okay like these are observable that objects but with the buffer operator we are getting the, the actual items so as i says that's the only difference the window operator behaves the same way as the buffer that's the only difference it behaves the same way it behaves the same way as the buffer operator but the only difference is that the buffer will give you will give you uh, an object but the window will give you an observable so for we to get for we to get the items from this observable all that we have to do is we have to use uh we have to use let's say a flat map to convert these observables okay to convert these observables and you return integer observables so Let's return them and let's run this if we can get anything. Okay. So this is giving us, I think, it is buffering them, okay, but because we are emitting the individual items, let's try to see if we can, instead of flatten it up, let's still keep the buffer state. So to list, let's put it in a form of to list. The list will give us a single, so let's try to convert the single to observable. Okay, so guys, so now you see, now we can compare the difference between the window operator and the buffer operator. They basically behave the same way, but with a little uh, difference. So the difference is that while the buffer will give you the actual object the window will give you the observable okay so if you want to get the items you have to apply this operator like a flat map for you to be able to get the actual items from them so guys so uh now we come we come to the con now we come to the end of our tutorials on this uh, transformers so as i said with the buffer buffer operator will, will, will keep will, will just bundle the items will bundle the items pair the maybe the parameter given to it if you want to take let's say if you want to buffer an emission only three emissions before it emits to the subscriber it will keep them let's say the buffer is like for example in data structure we can use let's say an array for the buffer it will keep the items in the buffer when it when the count is up to three it will emit the item back to you as we just demonstrated the same way the same way goes for the window operator it will buffer the items the same in the same way as the buffer but what will happen is the results will not be an actual object but it will convert the buffer into an observable for you to do anything that you want to do with it so that's only the difference and when it comes to the flat map with the flat map too, as I said, the flat map will behave in a way as the map. But in this in this case, the flat map will allow you to apply a function to your observable and later and still convert after applying the function to observable, you you will still get the results as an observable. Okay. That's one of the difference. Uh um, yes, between the flat map and the map. And a difference between the flat map and the concat map is that they behave the same way, but the flat map will try to 
it, it wouldn't really respect the order of your data or the sequence of the data. But with the concat map, the concat map will try to uh, obey the sequence, the order of your items. Just that. That's the only difference between the flat map and the concat map. Okay. And I also said that the concat map, because it maintains the order, it's very expensive because it has to check that all the items are in order. So meaning that when there's an operation and the, this let's say operation A is supposed to take, let's say, 20 minutes, it will wait for the 20 minutes to finish before it will go to operation B. But the flat map doesn't do that. Once the flat map sees that the operation A is taking time, it will interleave it and go to operation B. And go and work on operation B. So it's like they work in a parallel mode. Nice. And the map operator, we said that with the map operator, you just apply a function to your observables, okay, to your emissions. So we try you just try to change the form. And that's that. And the group by operator, uh, as we said, we just we have the items and the emissions, then we try to group them according to some some condition. So in this case, we try to group them, we try to check if the emissions are either an even number or an odd number. So, okay, so that's what we did. That's what we did in Tija module 2 is going to do. So I think we know this. And the last operator we, we talked about was scan operator. The scan operator, I said, behaves like a map and also behaves like a reduced operator. But the difference is that with the with the with the scan, the difference between the scan and the map is that you you apply it will allow you to apply a function to your emission. But in the same way, it will give you the previous emission that you had. So it will give you the current emission, then still give you the previous emission so that you can use the previous emission for any operation that you want to do. That's the difference between the scan and the map. Okay, and we demonstrated. Guys, so this uh, this brings us to the end of our tutorials on transforming or the transformers in Arrows Java. So, if as I said, I always say, if you haven't subscribed, please go to the down button. You see the red uh, the red button, then you press on the subscribe. Anytime I release a new video, you get it, and we all learn. Okay, and build what whatever you want to build. So. Thank you for having time with me. And if you have any comments, anything that you want, you will want me to better it up, you could leave me a comment on the commentary. Thank you. Bye.